guys, welcome to your first robotics tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be going over how to code the crossing gate that we built in the last tutorial. We will be using the RoboPlus software. You can install this through the website, which I provided you a link to, or it should come in a CD form with the kit that you have. Alright, let's begin. Make sure that you have your controller hooked up to your computer. This would be the CM510 or the CM530 that we have screwed onto the back of the crossing gate. You can make sure this is hooked up to the USB port in the back and make sure that it also has power and it's on. All right. In order to make sure that your controller is hooked up to the computer, you can click on the word on this drop down box and make sure that yours is selected. I'm using the 530. Now, if you don't know what port it's on, normally I don't either, you can just do an automatic search and a window will pop up that says found a connected controller. If you have an error, then make then just go through the steps of making sure that your controller is on, it has power, and that it's hooked up to the computer through the USB port. Now, let's begin. In order for our program to have some place to start, we need to give it a line of code for it to know where its starting place is. So, right click, edit line, start program. This will be the basis for our program. Later on, we will be making functions that will call inside this, and this these will lay outside of our program. Instead of our start program, we're going to double click, go down to the condition, and hit the if statement. Inside this if statement, double click on the first question mark. You see where it says the this actuator and all this stuff. Go to custom and assign it the ID of 1 and then give it the address of 3 and hit OK. Then inside right here make sure it says not equal and then scroll down go to number hit this up to 1 and hit OK. Inside this first if statement we are going to have a call to a function so double click scroll down Hit call function, click right here, and type assembly error. This function that we named called assembly error, we will make later. In order to make more room so that we can code more, hit the space button on the line that you want to move down. Right here, we're actually going to put another if statement. So if our ID with the value of 1 with the address of 8 equals 0 equals and then we're going to put a number 8 here by double clicking on that question mark going to number and hitting 8 then we're going to assign it the value 1023 so what we do is we double click inside the if statement go to load and double click on assignment I'll do that again just in case it was I wasn't slow enough so click inside our if statement right here, double click, go to load where it says assignment value, and you'll get these two question marks. Again, we'll go to the custom, assign it the ID of 8 with the ad I mean the ID of 1 with the address of 8, and then assign it the value 1023. Actually, I didn't mean to give you an 8. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to say 0. So this is what your code should look like at the end of these two if statements. There's going to be quite a bit more code, but for now. Now we're going to put an if statement again. If, this is where we're going to do something new, we're going to stay right here where the controller is, these are the different pieces of our controller, okay? We're going to hit button and then we're going to hit OK. Now this is where we get to do something a little bit different. When you scroll down, you're going to see that we now have an option for button and we're going to select the D and hit OK. What this is saying, when the button equals D, then we're going to jump to a portion of code. And this portion of code will be assembly 
check low. All right. Now we have three if statements written, and now we're going to declare some values. To make our code a little bit easier to read, we're going to insert a comment. Declaring our variables. Hit enter. See how it's green? That means when the program is looking this over, it's going to ignore this little comment. Now we're going to create some variables. How we're going to do this is go to load, double click, double click on the question mark, click on variable down here, and create a new variable. We're going to name this open with a capital O initial. and hit OK. Now we're going to assign it the number 819. Oops, 819. Again, now we're going to assign another variable and this one's going to be called closed initial. These values will stand for when the gate is open, for when it will be closed. Closed initial, and we're going to hit 512. In case I'm not going fast, slow enough, scroll down to the bottom where the constant value is and hit number. And then type in the number 512. Or you can use these little arrows, but that seems to be a waste of time. So hit OK. Again, now we're going to assign a speed to our ID, so the rate at which it moves. So now we're going to do this is load again, and then go down to our actuator, and you see how it has the address assigned, I mean the ID of 1. We're going to then hit moving speed, hit OK, and then assign it a value of 100. By clicking, scrolling down, hitting number, and typing 100. And once again, we're going to call a function by scrolling down, hitting call function, and then naming, naming it, naming it initial position. Oh, I spelled it wrong, my bad. I'll redo that part, don't look at me like that. And we're going to name it initial position. What we're going to create now is an endless loop. We're going to double click. The reason we're going, the next step is that we're going to create an endless loop. The reason we're going to do this is this is going to be our button logic. So when we press the button U and it moves our gate up and when we hit the button D it'll move our gate down. And we need to have an endless loop because it'll continue for the entirety of the program. Double click. See the loops option right here? Double click on endless loop. Inside of here, we're going to have an if statement. We're actually going to have two if statements. Make ourselves a little more room. Oh dear. We're going to make ourselves two if statements. We're going to make ourselves two if statements. This first if statement is going to be for the button that is labeled U. So double click on that question mark, scroll down, hit button, hit U hit OK. Then we're going to put some logic in here. Double click, hit load, double click on the question mark, can you see this? We need to go down to the actuator again, see how it has a value of 1, that's our actual ID, hit goal position, hit OK, 
and then we're actually going to put this as the variable that we declared earlier. So we're going to scroll to open initial and hit OK. I did this by hitting on variable right here. Again, now we're going to assign it for the other button, D. Hit button. OK. Then we're going to scroll down to the actual naming portions. Hit D. Hit OK. And down here, we're going to do what we did in the previous if statement. But this time, we're going to assign it the variable closed initial. So double click. Go to actuator. Call position. Hit OK. And this time, instead of hitting closed position, hitting variable under this section, go to closed initial and hit OK. Alright, guys. Next, let's make some space in the space bar a few times. We're going to need it. What we're going to create here is a place for the code to jump to. So, you know where we put the words assembly check mode? Now we're going to put. Uh, a label and change this name to assembly check mode. And hit enter. Underneath this, we're going to be declaring some variables. So double click and hit the assignment value again. And this time we're going to be going to buzzer time, which will be inside of our controller. So buzzer time, hit OK. And like we've done before, <laughs> we done before. I know. God damn it. Fine. Okay. Thank God there's no clock on this computer. So I took it off so I couldn't see any like this time changes and shit. There's a reason, okay, that I never record time because they're like, fuck, this bitch just went up an hour. Okay. So like we have before, scroll down, hit buzzer time value, and click play special melody. Hit OK. Double click again, go to the assignment value, double click, hit this buzzer index, and hit OK. Now we're going to assign an actual melody, which can be pretty fun. You see how we scroll down and we have melodies right here? We have a melody or a musical scale. Click on melody. You can actually test them by hit test playing. I'm going to use melody 1 and hit OK. Next, I'm going to assign and create a new variable by double clicking, hitting load, clicking on variable, and typing the word ID. Hit OK. We're going to assign this the value of 1 by scrolling down, hitting this number, and hitting it up to 1. Clicking OK. And next, I'll actually show you some more stuff you can do. So now we're going to be doing some more ID-based stuff for our next three variables. So, double click. Sorry. Uh, make sure that you're saving constantly. So hit Control S to save and name this Bioloid Crossing Gate or whatever you would like it to be titled. And make sure that you save periodically because if your program crashes or somehow you just lose power, you want to be able to start where you left off and not have to redo all this code. So, alright, hit, I uh, double click on the question mark and let's go to the actuator. You see how the, you have all these numbers? If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the word all. Hit OK. Um, I did actually mean to put torque enabled. And we're going to give this the value of false. Make sure you scroll down. These options change with what you're choosing, like how we chose buzzer uh, index, and there was melody and play melody. This, these are just values that are attached to whatever we choose in here. So now we're going to hit true or false. Make sure that you click false and hit OK. In a bag, I'm useless, but not for long. The future is coming on. I'm happy. I'm feeling glad.